Hey YouTube and welcome to video number two. The response to the first video has been pretty great, so I'm super happy about that. Thank you very much to everybody for uh, for getting behind this new venture of mine. Um, today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently to last week. There's going to be a few different formats for videos on this channel. Um, some of them will be very kind of how-to, where I will sort of start to finish the process on a style perhaps but something I wanted to go over this week was more of like a, a, a technique like a you know a sort of direct doctoring kind of clinic on, on a specific technique and that's something that a lot of people find that they struggle with which is painting faces at small scale um, and hair as well and particularly people seem to struggle with doing these things in, in a way that isn't super time consuming, but still gives them a good result. So we're gonna be focusing today pretty much entirely on that. I've got a piece that I've almost entirely finished. We're gonna to head to down cam and I'm gonna to start to talk you through some of the things that we're gonna do and then there'll be some cuts back to me as we'll chat about other things. Um, and hopefully this is gonna be really, really informative for a few people to um, help them draw some face. First of all, the colours that I use for doing my skin tones are carbon black um, and titanium white, obviously. Then the three on the right are a little bit unusual. Primary magenta, um, which tends to form the basis for my skin tones, followed by primary yellow. And uh, the one on the right is actually primary cyan. I know it looks very blue, but it is, it's called primary cyan. And now I'm just taking a second to show you the prepped card before I've actually started doing any work on it. So this is just pencil lines in place and uh, the extremes of highlight and shadow marked out with pencil lines as well, ready for me to start going into. Here I'm gonna show you how I start to mix the base flesh tone. This is the darkest part of the flesh tone. So I started with my um, primary magenta and now I'm adding in a good chunk of primary cyan and a good chunk of primary yellow. Um, then I'm just gonna put in a little tiny dot of black to desaturate it and darken it slightly. You really don't want too much of that though. So now I've got um, some footage of me just starting to put in the darkest lines first of all. What we're looking for here is just universally all of the darkest parts in the facial structure. Doesn't matter what their finished color's gonna be, we can go over later with a black or a gray or whatever it needs to be. But we're just trying to leave good solid markers for our darkest points here. Um, now I'm gonna go to some sped up footage and this is now gonna show you me infilling the rest of that. What I'm trying to do here is create a good dark base that allows me to then start to glaze over at a later date and I'll still be able to see all of these dark spots. Right, so once you've got all of that lined in, um, you're kind of at a point now where there is, it, it, there stops being a right and wrong way to do this, okay? What I do from here, um, I take that same shade color that I've just lined everything in with, I thin it right down to a glaze and I paint it all over the entire face. And I can usually just about see my pencil lines through that. What that does is gives me an approximate mid-tone reference visually. And then from there, I go back into that shade tone and I make sure that I keep some of it separate and I just start attacking uh, different amounts of white added to get sort of the brightness and darkness to where I want it. And then I'll start to add in little tints of blue and little tints of yellow. Um, and, and it really is about placing these where you where you feel like they look right. Um, unless you are trying to do a perfect carbon copy of a reference, which is something I personally don't ever do. So unless you're trying to do an absolutely perfect carbon copy of a reference, you're really gonna have to um, just use a bit of intuition Think about where you want your highlights warmer, add a touch of yellow. Where you want them colder, add a touch of blue. Where you want them lighter, add white, add more white, add more white again. Keep adding white, it's absolutely fine. You can go as far as you want with that. Um, and, and where you want them darker, step back towards that original base tone. Don't add black because it will desaturate. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back to another really fast piece of sped up footage that's going to show me working through that process. So you'll get a bit of an insight into how I have it um, but I really can't stress enough this is something that's quite personal and you are going to have to sort of play around with it a little bit and figure out how you prefer to deal with it. 
Next up, you're gonna see me now starting to glaze over those darkest spots. And the glaze isn't very thin, so I can still see my pencil underneath it. I did mention that um, in the face cam footage, but I just wanna make sure that you're aware as you watch this of how thin that glaze needs to be. We use those primaries because they're transparent colors so they can stain and filter very nicely whilst still being transparent enough for us to be able to see what's going on. Now we're gonna switch over to my palette cam for a second just to show you me mixing a mid-tone now as I block that in. And then we'll come back and you'll see me block all of the mid-tones in. So, I've, you've just seen me establish the mid-tones now, that was the first part that I explained I was going to do, and now you're going to see some more time-lapse footage of me as I start to apply the highlights, apply the tones, etc. Something to note here, this is about 20 minutes of footage that I'm going to have to speed up quite a lot so that it doesn't get too boring, you know? Um, so just pay attention for the spots where you'll notice that I add yellow to my highlights, as I mentioned previously, add blue to my highlights, that kind of thing. Look for that modulation, because I think that's the part that most people find tricky about getting that believable skin tone. Hopefully that'll help. Now we can settle in. Uh, this is gonna be the longest part of my pre-recorded sped up footage. This is basically me just going through the piece and starting from that mid-tone, adding white, bringing in those basic highlights. There'll be sections where I'll add yellow, sections where I'll add blue. Um, I'm gonna be switching between filtering and heavy painting here and just starting to really create those nice, smooth, slowly built up, careful transitions now. Uh, this is the one part you really can't rush. This is where you want to invest the most time as you start to go up from those mid-tones and then later come back down into the shadow tones. Coming up here is the first section where I really felt like I needed to push that luminosity a little bit. So you'll see me now with a good chunk of yellow added to my highlights and you're really gonna notice that boost in brightness from that yellow being added in. For the teeth and the eyes here, I'm using a really, really bright color. This is just off-white now. But when we get to the eyes, I'm actually not painting the eyeballs themselves. I'm leaving them basically flesh-colored. And this is a mistake a lot of people make, is brightening the eyeballs too much and making them look unrealistic. The white or off-white parts that I'm putting in are just for reflections in the iris and the pupil, nothing else. Okay, so now we're gonna go into looking at hair. Um, hair, my approach to hair tends to be, um, I, I really try and keep it quite simple. So in this instance, we're doing black hair. Um, what I will usually do for black hair is just block out the entire area in black, first of all. And then once I've got that black in, um, I'll work up just a very, very dark gray. Uh, in fact, in the footage, you're gonna notice you can barely even see the dark gray. It's really more for my visual reference than to actually have a, a drastic effect on the color of the piece. Um, but we'll start with that dark gray and all but the deepest areas of the hair, the, the areas that are set back, such as in, you know, behind the neckline, that kind of thing, we'll leave black. 
the rest of the hair we'll push grey into and then we'll just slowly start adding white highlights and really just using flicking strokes, very fast short strokes off the tip of the brush, adding more and more white. Once we've got it up to the level that we're happy with, then at the very, very end, we'll go back in with some pure black again and just pull back down any areas that have got too bright. It's a really, really simple process. Again, you're gonna see it in some sped up footage now, so hopefully this will be helpful. Now we're finally onto the hair, and as I said in the face cam section, um, what I'm doing here, it's very, very hard to see, but I'm just painting a really dark gray. Um, as my base for this and then you'll see me just start to add highlights on top of that with progressively more white as we go along. And that's about the shape and size of it, folks. Um, I, I think this is a complex process. I don't think it's something that you can necessarily get first time just by watching a video. I've tried to provide this sped up footage so that you can actually see at least start to finish in some kind of way that's a bit more digestible uh, what steps I actually take as I'm going through. However, this, this is not a perfect solution. So one thing I will say is, if you have any specific questions, if there's anything that you wanna know, drop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer those for you. Um, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Links are all in the description of the video. And I will see you in the next one, folks. Please, I really hope you did find this helpful and do comment if you have any feedback or suggestions. Cheers and bye for now.